The presented cable-driven motion system is a project started back in 2015 when the 3D printer market was not as well developed as it is now. The goal was to develop a very fast kinetic platform with a lightweight end defector and also to try something different in the 3D printer space. The overall kinematic is based on the well-known Delta platform, which has three translational degrees of freedom. In this parallel kinematic configuration, all the motors remain stationary. Instead of using belt drives and linear rails with rigid rods driving the end effector, direct cable drives with preloading rods were used. The design decouples the preloading forces from the drive force so that the motors only have to provide the power for the actual motion. This enables large preloading forces for better stiffness while using off-the-shelf stepper motors. A cable deflection system in each winch block guides the cables while providing two rotational degrees of freedom. The actuator consists of a winch shaft directly driven by a stepper motor, a cable deflection system, a preloading rod, which is attached to the end effector with a ball joint, and a preloading spring. The preloading rod and spring hold the cable under constant tension. Note that the torque generated on the drive shaft by the upper and lower cable sections cancel out completely while allowing for a large range of motion. The winch actuator is built from widely available hardware and 3D printed parts. The CAD model you see here is the first hardware version, which had a few problems and inconveniences. Many improvements were implemented in the second version of the winch system. Finding a well-working design for the cable deflection system and the cable mounting rings on the drive shaft was quite a challenge. Now let's see the winch system in action. The cable mounting rings are quite elaborated and include a cable end stop so that the cable can spool up correctly under tension. Here you can see an overview of the motion system with all three actuators. Note that for this demonstration, one actuator was not equipped with cables. As a side note, all 3D printed parts you see here were printed with hardware version 1. Unfortunately, I do not have more footage from the new hardware version, but you can see version 1 in action during 3D printing in the following clip. To perform accurate motion with a presented hardware, a kinematic model is required. That transforms desired XYZ coordinates into rotation angles for the motors. The model has to run in real time on the 3D printer hardware, but also needs to account for subtle effects produced by the cable deflection system to be accurate. Such a model was developed and implemented for the Smoothie board in the SmoothieWare firmware, which runs on a 32-bit ARM Cortex-N3 with 120 MHz. Once such a model is present, the model parameters have to be found. Some of them can be measured directly from the CAD model or the actual setup. Others have to be found indirectly by performing measurements and optimizing the model parameters. A small 3D printer host software was developed for this project that provides several calibration procedures and the kinematic model optimization code. The software also includes the possibility to visualize the kinematic model, its workspace, and sensitivity as shown here. The simplest calibration method probes a plane and optimizes the kinematic parameters accordingly. <laughs>
I want to finish this video with a small analysis of the project. Overall, it turned out pretty good, and the machine served as my first 3D printer for many years, until it was replaced by a core size setup. One of the hardest problems was the kinematic calibration of the system. Despite trying various techniques, there were some residual distortions of the workspace in the order of 0.2 mm that I could not get rid of completely. Also, the Dyneema strings used are quite thin, and are thus less stiff than a bulky frame of aluminum extrusions. Another drawback is the wear of the strings, and I had to replace them every six months or so. However, there are improvements that could be implemented to reduce this problem. On the other side, there are a lot of advantages, and I believe the design shines when used on larger machines with a bigger workspace in the meter range. There, it can be quite cost-effective and performant compared to other solutions. It seems also suited for pick-and-place tasks, where accuracy requirements might not be as stringent.